I want to dive right into this. Let's just pray real quick. Father, we just honor you. We thank you. We acknowledge you. And the Holy Spirit, we're so aware that you're on the inside of us. And Lord, I thank you for bringing everybody here safely. That they're healthy, God. And we just thank you that we're alive today. And Father, we just want you. We didn't come here for a man or a band. We came here for the King of glory. The author of our faith. Jesus, we bless you. With the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight. I pray, Lord, that every word that comes out would have a weight on it and that it would pierce every heart with compassion like an arrow, God. Reach every soul and those watching on live stream today. We bless your name and we thank you in advance. Hallelujah. And everybody says, Amen. 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 Well, I have it on my heart. You know, I've been praying about uh, being with you all tonight and just really asking God, what do you want to say to the people here? And I really felt in my heart that there's a generation that God is raising up right now that are not going to be addicted to the things of the world, but are going to be addicted to his presence. So tonight I want to talk about this man named Jesus. If that's all right with you. I want to talk about having a holy addiction with this man Jesus, with his presence. You know, I, I want to also step on some toes tonight with love, of course, because I believe the Lord wants to break us free from the things that have our attention when, when he should have our attention. We should be having our gaze on him. And so many of us are struggling. So many of you are struggling in here tonight. You came in saying, man, I just came for a right now word. I believe tonight is your night for a miracle. Come on, I didn't come here to play games. I'm not a professor. I'm going to preach it how I feel it. I came here to punch some demons in the mouth. Let the devil and his mother-in-law know we got the power of God. And we are going to be addicted to Jesus in his presence and not everything else. Amen. Well, how many know that addiction to Jesus is the solution for you to live a godly and holy life? Somebody say, I'm an addict. I'm addicted to Jesus. You know, C.S. Lewis said these words. He said, if I find myself a desire which no experience in this world can satisfy, the most probable explanation is that I was made for another world. I don't know if you called that. I'm going to say it one more time. C.S. Lewis said, if I find myself a desire which no experience in this world can satisfy, the most probable explanation is that I was made for another world. Friend, did you know that Americans are the most addicted people in the world? That means that there are more things to become addicted to in America than anywhere else in the world. And when we hear the word addictions, we usually think about drugs. And even though drugs are still the most addictive, and America actually leads the world with the most drug addicts, yet there are other forms of addiction just as fatal, and I want to name just a few. For example, gambling is one. It is on the rise in America right now. Of course, smoking will never cease to be an addiction in America. Alcohol is another that has always plagued America. Did you know that the average age of first-time drinkers are now 12 in America another one is web addiction woman to go on the back my brother Isaiah said the Lord spoke to him one day and said this generation is not giving their life away they're scrolling their life away an addiction to surfing the net just for the passing of time and the hours of surfing the net has almost passed the amount of hours children under the age of 12 watch television. And the shocking thing about all these statistics is that out of all these millions of Americans that are, at, are addicts or on the way to becoming addicts, many of them are Christians. And how sad and yet how true Friend, it is no stretch of the truth at all when we think that out of the 120 million Americans that are addicts, some of those are Christians. What do you say, Matt? There's too many believers that watch too much TV. It's an addiction. They have to find out who's sleeping with who. It robs them, with, with, uh, uh, it robs them of their time with God. 
It implants thoughts which breed only discontentment with their present life because they aren't like those who they see on TV. Others are addicted to comparing themselves to those online or with influence. People are addicted to competing with others when in reality the only competition they should have is who can serve each other better. Some Christians hunt too much, fish too much, golf too much, work too much. I told you I was going to be real tonight. Thank you, Mary, for shouting me down on the comments. Got one amen online, praise God. Some people work too much or apart from their families too much, sleep too much, eat too much, talk too much. Come on, some bodies. Others are addicted to taking a vacation from their salvation. That'll preach right there. And there's a huge hole in the heart of every person alive, a deep void that screams to be filled. People are addicted to trying to fill this void because they want to truly be satisfied. And we attempt, friend, to fill that void with everything other than God. Everything from different activities to relationships to careers. But the problem with these attempts is this. None of them will ultimately satisfy. Oh, you may find a certain amount of enjoyment and even contentment in those things for a while. But in the end, they will leave you empty, longing for something more. Friend, if you're here tonight, I came to let you know all the way from Chicago that Jesus is the only one who can satisfy your soul. He's the only one who can fill the void in your heart that you've been trying to fill with everything other than Him. People are addicted to sin. But let me tell you the danger of it for just a few moments. Let me tell you why we shouldn't sin. And we've all fallen short of the glory of God. I get that. We all have weaknesses, including myself. Praise God for His grace and His mercy to empower us to overcome sin. And praise God that the closer we get to Him, the further we get from our sinful ways. But let me help somebody here tonight. See, God doesn't want you to sin because it's a temporary feeling for an eternal loss. It will rob you of your testimony. This is why we should not be addicted to sin. Because it invites the discipline of God in your life why should not sin man I'll tell you why because a little sin Zach leads to more sin I'm telling you today it invites God in to really kind of slap you on the hand and say hey that's not really of me that's not holy I, I say in my word be ye holy for I am holy I don't know about you I'm thankful for conviction because it lets me know that God cares for me but I want to strive to live a holy and pure life God's word says blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God anybody want to live a life of purity and holiness it's a cuss word in the church today holiness I want to live pure before God time spent in sin is forever wasted you know your sin never pleases but it always grieves God who loves you more than you could ever imagine it places a greater burden on your spiritual leaders. Your sin will always bring heaviness to your heart. God is going to break this addiction tonight and give you a holy addiction to Him. I'm telling you, sin will always make you feel less than what you could be. See, others, including your family, suffer consequences due to your sin. It will deceive you into believing you have gained when in reality you have lost. Anybody with me tonight? It will make you, I'm telling you, it will keep you from qualifying even for spiritual leadership. Can I help somebody? to get breakthrough tonight I'm telling you tonight because sin may influence others to sin it keeps others from knowing Christ it's impossible to sin and follow the Spirit at the same time steals your reputation it's adultery with the world and to sin is not to love Christ it takes you further than you want to go it keeps you longer than you want to stay. It costs you more than you want to pay. And you know what C.S. Uh, Lewis said? He said these words. Sin would not be so attractive if the wages were paid immediately. Romans 6.23 says, For the wages, wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. He said that sin would not be so attractive if the wages were paid immediately. My God. 
one of the first things we learn when trying to break bad habits is that we can't just stop that habit and expect to succeed without filling the hole it leaves in our life with something else in fact one of the reasons we so easily cave into addictions is because we were created to have relationship with God and there is nothing else that can satisfy that craving anybody here tonight saying God I, I need you to fill the void in my heart I've been filling it with so many things that are not satisfying it's not truly fulfilling it's temporary again it's a temporary feeling for an eternal loss God wants to give you breakthrough tonight I'm telling you somebody in here is struggling and God is saying to you lay that down at my feet today come to me all those who are weary and burdened and I will give you rest I'm telling you addiction is going to be broken off of your life tonight every bondage of the enemy for this reason the son of man was manifested to destroy the works of the devil and I believe the Savior of the world is in here tonight he's his presence is tangible for those watching on live stream I'm telling you if you would just lay it at his feet put your pride aside and say God fill me empower me fill this void in my heart I want you in my life and when we are not in right, right relationship with God we are desperate desperately trying to fill that incompleteness within us and whatever else is offered to us and I believe God is saying today it's your time for breakthrough the day he's not going to let the devil continue to just keep hitting you with these uh with these uh, uh these sin issues and these struggles or whatever you've been struggling with your whole life the weak areas God is going to teach you how to strengthen those areas and starve that that desire out of you and and he's going to he's going to teach you how to get that sin to weaken in your life by following him and being in his word he's going to teach you tonight he's going to release a fresh hunger in this place I believe it he's going to ignite a fresh fire in your heart thank you Jesus for your power and we thank you for your fire some of you it's overwhelming I can just feel it in the spirit right now it's just oh you've been overwhelmed and God's gonna rescue you tonight he's gonna save you tonight and he's gonna deliver you today's your day for healing somebody say amen today's your day for healing If we think about Solomon in the Word of God, it's hard for us to wrap our minds around how rich this guy was. 1 Kings chapter 10, verse 14 tells us that Solomon received 666 talents of gold each year as a base income. Friend, in today's market, that would be around $1.5 billion a year. It's a lot of money no matter what century you live in. And basically, Solomon was so rich that he could buy whatever he wanted, Zach. He took full advantage of his assets. He wrote in Ecclesiastes chapter 2 verse 10, And whatever my eyes desired, I did not keep from them. I kept my heart from no pleasure. And isn't that the dream of most people today? Unlimited resources, power, respect, excitement, and pleasure. Doesn't everybody want that today? 2021, everybody wants unlimited resources power and respect excitement and pleasure if I could just win the lottery Matt then I'll be all set we secretly dream these things and see Solomon had all of it but listen to what Solomon eventually confessed he said these words then I considered all that my hands had done in the toil I had expended in doing it and behold all was vanity and a striving after wind and there was nothing to be gained under the sun see friend what was true for Solomon is true for us when we try to make things in this life fill the void we sense we end up hating those things that we poured our, all our hopes into because they ultimately fall short of satisfying us and God wants to teach you tonight that whatever you've been trying to fill that void in your heart with he's saying it's not greater than me it's not better than me the peace I can give you nothing else can give you the joy I can give you no one else can give you the love that I can pour out on you it's greater than any love you can receive from anybody else anybody with me tonight you just want to give it all the Jesus and say Lord I laid at your feet tonight break these chains of addiction oh Matt I don't have any addiction you'd be surprised the Holy Spirit might put his finger on tonight in your life humility draws God pride repels God humility is when we acknowledge that God is greater than us humility is acknowledging how small we are and how big he is 
Are you hearing me? Many people hop from adventure to adventure seeking their next fix. Some even hop from one relationship to another. Come on, somebody. But the problem is it's a never-ending cycle because only God can fill the void in your heart. you got to stop chasing that guy, stop chasing that girl, and just chase Jesus. When you look to him, I'm telling you, he'll send somebody your way. you got to stop it. I was telling Zach earlier, people need to become whole. Let God make you whole before you try to go to somebody else. So many people are broken and confused and they're trying to like go to somebody because they think that person's going to fill the void in their heart. No matter how much water you pour in a bucket, it doesn't matter if that bucket has holes in it. Are you hearing me? I saw a quote. It says that if you don't heal from what hurt you, you'll bleed on others who didn't cut you. People are bleeding on other people and others are bleeding on others. And it's like, if you would just look to him and make you whole and let him fill that void in your heart, you would experience true peace, true joy. Are you hearing me tonight? Trying to help somebody. Friend, when we attempt to fill the void in us with things other than God, those things become idols. And all those other things are not wrong in themselves. We are free to enjoy them in the proper place. But hear me, anything in our lives that give the devotion that God alone deserves become an idol. And I'm going to say it here, even the wonderful people in our lives can become idols. Only in an ongoing relationship with God will we find the ultimate peace, intimacy, forgiveness, and joy that our hearts long for. This is the year to get addicted to Jesus. Somebody shout, I'm addicted to Jesus. I'm addicted to Jesus. The only way to really be 100% set free of addiction for a lifetime is to fill that hole that compels us to search for a solution, is to find and experience. I'm to find and experience the saving grace of Jesus. I'm here to let you know tonight that only, I'm going to say it over and over again, only Jesus can fill the a void in your heart only Jesus can do what you he can give you what you're longing for every human is longing for a relationship with the Creator every human that's why when I when, when I witness to people you know I've had so many people say so many times they say man I, I don't know what it is I don't necessarily even believe in the God that you serve but I'm so attracted to the message why am, I, why am I attracted? It's not that they're attracted to me. It's not that they're attracted to you. They're attracted to the God inside of you. Why? Because it's a natural instinct for creation to be attracted to its creator. Are you hearing me tonight? It's a, I'm telling you, God, that God of the Bible, the God that lives inside of you, wants to manifest through you. But it's not going to happen if you don't know who you are in Him. And you don't allow Him to truly fill the void in your heart. Are you with me? The word addict comes from the Latin word addictus. For those who wanted some solid theology tonight, make sure I threw this in there. Which means assigned to or surrender to someone who completely surrenders their will. Give you some more easy English here. The English definition of addict is someone who is devoted to or abandoned their will to an object, person, or thing. This is why I say I'm addicted to Jesus. I have abandoned my self-will and surrendered to his will. Do you want the same thing tonight? Those watching on live, do you want the same thing tonight? Now is the time for salvation. Paul said, knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. This is the moment to get right with God. This is the moment. This is the year with all the chaos going around, going on. We need Jesus. We need Jesus, man. We need to know who we are. No more backsliding and going this way and that way and not being rooted in, in who you are in Jesus. No more going astray. Just stay committed. It's time to stay committed. I'm preaching to myself. God, I want to stay committed to you. I want to be committed to you. And at the end of this message, I want to, I want to just share, I, I want to just with my heart and with the love and compassion of Jesus provoke you to action to say, Lord, I, I don't want to know, I don't want to just be 50% yours, 90% yours. I want to be 100% yours. I want you to be my master, my Lord, my Savior. I want you to be everything in my life. 
There's a difference between being saved and Jesus being Lord of your life. I hope you know that. Some of us in here, Jesus is not Lord in every area of our life. He tells us in Matthew twenty-two thirty-seven, 37, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, with all your strength. He is talking to believers. He's talking to us, and he's not making a suggestion. It's a command. We must love him with all of our being. What are you saying, Matt? In other words, we must abandon our own selfish will and surrender it to him. He becomes our life, and his priorities become our purpose. Are you hearing me tonight? Jesus said something, I'm telling you, that must have shaken his hearers in their hearts. He said these words. Jesus said this. If anyone comes to me and does not hate father and mother wife and children brothers and sisters yes even their own lives such a person cannot be my disciple Jesus said this he said these words he said that to become his true disciple one must be willing to hate everything else in other words our love for the Lord Jesus must be so deep so intense so passionate and all-consuming that every other love seems like hate in comparison that's what he's saying here that your love for him must be so deep so intense so passionate so all-consuming that every other love seems like hate in comparison what has your attention that shouldn't God is calling us tonight he explains further in Matthew 10 37 anyone who loves their father and mother more than me is not worthy of me anyone who loves their son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me he says these words he is the king of love and he must become the king of our hearts tonight I'm telling you I'm telling you Jesus is here and he's ready to become the king of your heart he's ready to sit on the throne of your heart if you want to be his true follower I'm telling you Revelation 3.16 says that if our relationship with him is lukewarm, then he will spit us out of his mouth. What does that mean? It means that if we do not love him with our whole being, which means putting him first in everything, holding nothing back, then he is not pleased with us and we will miss the abundant life he came to give us. It's one thing I love about quarantine is we had so much time to become addicted to Jesus become addicted to his presence so many people say man I've never been this locked in my house before and it's like God saying you've never been this locked into me before we have more than enough time to make the Word of God the compass that we rely on for direction somebody say I'm addicted I'm addicted. Come on, I'm thankful. I'm thankful for that time of quarantine where I got to store within me the Word of God. Come on, I'm addicted to Jesus because He is my peace. Outside of that, there is unrest and commotion. Come on, I'm addicted to Jesus because He is my joy. I don't need any other joy. I'm addicted to this man because He is the atonement for all my sins. He's cast all my sins behind me into the sea of forgetfulness. Come on, anybody else addicted tonight? I'm addicted to Him because He is my sanctifier. He purifies me again and again as long as I live his death is working in me with the result that there is gradually more room for the life of Christ I'm addicted to Jesus he is my shepherd even if no one else cares for me he does so faithfully day and night he is faithful even when I'm faithless that's why I'm addicted to Jesus he's my song of praise and if there is no other topic or any other reason for singing any praises he is he is my shepherd even when no one else cares for me I'm telling you he does he is our capital we don't need any other capital that's not sufficient then nothing is sufficient he is our income if that fails and everything fails he supplies all of our needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus come on I'm addicted to Jesus because he is my insurance if that isn't saved nothing saved. come on he is my future he is your future we look unto him and we are gonna meet him and our future is bright and long that's why I'm addicted to Jesus he is my Lord and my ruler and I've submitted to him being fully confident of the perfect goodness of his guidance and commands I'm addicted to Jesus because he transferred me out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light any other people in here addicted come on thank you Malawit thank you Kelly I got some people on here that are addicted I'm telling you today 
he is our fortress our shield our guardian and there we are safe I'm telling you he is our master if no one else instructs us diligently in the truth he does he is our leader he is our captain even when no one else strengthens us and teaches us to wage war he is a mighty warrior the captain of salvation come on he is our rest he is our storeroom even if we do not have any supplies yet in him dwells the fullness of the Godhead bodily I'm telling you today we are a member of his body we are filled with him this is why I'm addicted can I share my heart for a second praise God I'm gonna do it anyway I got the mic he is our physician I'm telling you he heals us when we're sick but if no earthly physician can heal our body, he can do it. These are reasons to be addicted to Jesus. He is our goal to become like him and partake in, of his nature. He is our forerunner. Are you hearing me? We are not journeying on an unknown way as an explorer. It is a way that has been cle cleared on which Jesus has run ahead. He is the one who has paved the way for us to walk. I'm telling you, Jesus, he paid the price. He died as you so that you would live as him. He literally became our identity. Come on, so that we would become him his identity he I'm, I'm telling you so many men wanted to become God but only one God became man can I say it can I say the truth tonight come on he's the only one this is why I'm addicted Buddha said he was some teacher of truth Muhammad said he was a prophet of truth but Jesus said he is the truth this is why we're addicted to him he's the only one who can save heal deliver he's the only one who can save your family members come on he's the oh he's the only one who would come down in flesh and actually die so that you can be you can be reconciled to God you can have access to the throne of grace he's our judge does it not matter how other people judge you He's faithful. He's an upright friend. He's our rock and our foundation. Can I keep going? He stands when everything else passes away. He is the author of our faith, the author of peace. Come on, somebody. He is the truth. There is never a reason to doubt him. I'm telling you, he's our defender, our advocate, our lawyer. We have no need for any other lawyers. Jesus is the only way. He is the mediator. He mediates between the Father and us. We have access to the Father through him. Anybody thankful tonight that he is God's son, conceived by the Holy Ghost, and he's alive and well. He is our high priest who has compassion with me and with you he is our holiday come on you cannot have a more strengthening vacation than by abiding in him he is the only way jesus i'm addicted to him come on he is the tree of life into which we've been grafted as a branch he's the chief cornerstone in the living building in which we have also become a living stone He's the head of the church, the body of which we become a member. I wrote this in, in my hotel room. Come on, somebody. He is our strength. We can do all things in him. Everything that he appoints for us, we can do. He is our refuge. We can avoid having to run to broken places on the day of need because we've got Jesus as a refuge. He is a fountain of life. The Bible says in Psalms 87, 7, all my fountains are in you. Come on, Jaden, shout me down. He is unchangeable and without shadow of turning. He is the, oh, I'm telling you, he's always the same, even though all others are as changeable as the moon he is the only one who can heal come on when i say i'm a jesus addict i mean that i crave him i need him i need him to function i need him sometimes just to breathe he's the only one who can fill the void in our hearts he's everything he's everything I want to be with him all the time. He's a source of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness. Am I giving you enough content tonight? Gentleness, faithfulness, self-control. And when you are a Jesus addict, you become a Jesus follower. Praise God. Hallelujah. Your every thought, every word, every act will be motivated and activated by God's unconditional love revealed and empowered by the Holy Spirit. We thank you, Lord need to wipe spit on this whole pulpit praise God can I share a parable with you and I'm almost through it's a parable by Reinhard Bonnke anybody love Reinhard Bonnke it's a mighty man of God who went with the Lord not too long ago billions and millions of people he led to Jesus Christ for all nations ministry he did massive crusades in Africa and I want to share one of his parables it really came to my heart tonight I felt the Holy Spirit speak to me to share it with you all it's a parable okay so this is an actual true story the story of this man he's a wealthy man and he owns this big mansion five rooms on the top floor five rooms on the bottom floor and one day he just heard a knock on the door and he opened it up and it was Jesus 
shining like the sun. And he says, Jesus, come on in. I've heard all about you, how you save people and heal them and deliver them and break their chains and fill them with peace and joy and with love. Please come in. I want you to be my guest. Jesus comes on in as a gentleman he is and he says Lord I want to give you the best room in my house master bedroom walk-in shower big panoramic view it's all yours if you like please be my guest again Jesus as a gentleman said thank you very much gave him the key goes upstairs and later that night another knock starts coming on the door guess who it is the devil he opens his door and says devil I don't want you in my house I've heard what you've done to people I've heard how you fill them with filthy temptations and compulsions and and fears and I've heard all about what you I don't want you in my house but see the devil already had his foot in the door isn't that something how all he needs is just a little foot in the door and the next thing you know he puts an elbow in the door a shoulder in the door and he'll bust right in. See, some of, so many of us here, we, we, we open doors to things and sin in our life. And we wonder why we're being tormented. We wonder why we feel defeated. It's because we opened a door for the enemy to come in. And people are trying to get rid of what they invited in. And that night, the devil tormented this man all night. He was no match for the devil. When the sun was rising, he slipped out the back door. Jesus comes down the stairs. And he says, Jesus, it's so I forgot you were in my house. I, I forgot that you were upstairs in the master bedroom. He says, wait a minute. If you were here, why couldn't you save me? Why couldn't you rescue me and deliver me? Why you, knowing what you can do, why did you not come down and help me? And Jesus said, sir, you own nine rooms in this house and you only gave me one room he says oh that makes so much sense he said so from this moment on i'm going to split my house 50 50. five rooms for you on the top five rooms for me on the bottom jesus as a gentleman says thank you very much goes back upstairs later that night knock comes on the door guess who it is you're doing great devil comes in again torments the man all night long zach all night long and then when the sun rises up jesus comes back down again now the man's just angry lord i gave you 50 percent of my house all the five rooms on top why didn't you save me you're the deliverer you're the redeemer why did you not come down and deliver me from this filthy devil jesus looks at him and says sir you only gave me five rooms in this house you still own the other five so the man says you know what from this point on i'm giving you every room in my house except the one i sleep in that's my room there's some things in there i don't want you to see lord you can have every other room all nine of them are yours I'll just have the one that I sleep into myself. <laughs> As a gentleman, the Lord says, thank you very much. Goes back upstairs. Guess what happens that night? A knock starts hitting the door again. It's the devil. And he opens it. What do you think happened? torments him all night long sun rises again the devil slips out the back door jesus comes down now this guy's crying lord he's crying why didn't you deliver me i gave you all nine rooms except the one that i sleep in why did you not deliver me from this devil every night he comes in and he torments me and you're nowhere to be found i was generous to you i gave you nine out of ten rooms of my house and this is how you treat me and Jesus says, listen, sir, let me help you out. You own this house. The title deed is in your name. Which means if you're the owner of this house, 
you must be the protector of this house you're the master I'm just the guest but let me help you out instead of inviting me in your house how about you give your house to me and I let you in my house the man says Lord from that moment I mean a veil just lifted like it's about to for many of you right now just a moment he says God everything's yours you can have all 10 rooms of my house even the one that I I stay in the one that I've got hidden things I don't want you to see you can have it all every window every every room I'm every all of it every blade of grass it's all yours you can keep it God take it all and Jesus says a gentleman he says thank you very much he gives him the, the clump of keys Jaden and he goes back upstairs and later that night guess who it is oh you got it by now and the man he already knew who was at the door and he was just trembling cold sweat coming down his face and he heard the knocking his knees started knocking and he's like I don't want to open this door but that temptation that the devil was filling him with all night long he just he couldn't help but to reach toward this door Zach and as he's reaching toward the door he feels a tap on his shoulder and he turns around and guess who it is Jesus the Lord himself and he looks at the man and he says excuse me sir this is my house let me answer this I feel the Holy Ghost in this place he opens up that see he's not Jesus is this scared of anybody he's not scared of nothing he busts open that door and he said who is it and the devil the devil looks at the house address and looks at Jesus and looks at the house address and looks back at Jesus and confused and very carefully he takes some steps backwards and he kneels down to his knees and says sorry sir I got the wrong house come on somebody give a praise give a praise in this place let me tell you what's gonna happen in just a few moments, we're going to have this altar call, and the altar's going to alter you tonight. If you're watching on live stream, the power of God, the anointing of the Holy Spirit is going to touch you wherever you are. You're no longer going to be halfway in and halfway out. You're no longer going to be riding the fence. You're going to give Him your all tonight. You're going to make Him your master, your Lord, your Savior. You're going to, I'm telling you, not 99.9%. You're going to be all the way in, fully committed, saying, God, here's my life. Fill the void. I want to be addicted to you. Come on, everybody stand on their feet right now I'm telling you in this place Psalm 84 1 through 2 says how lovely is your dwelling place Lord Almighty my soul yearns even faints for the courts of the Lord my heart and my flesh cry out for the living God Psalm 84 4 says blessed are those who dwell in your house they are ever praising you these are the ones who are addicted to Jesus Psalm 84 10 says better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked see I'm addicted to this man named Jesus I have a holy obsession with his presence because he is who he says he is and he's proved it to me time and time again and when you make him your Lord and you make him your master and you're the guest not him you can tell the devil you're off limits because of the blood of Jesus when you make him master of your life I'm telling you you can tell the devil I'm never turning off the switch of my faith because Jesus is the owner of this house of this tent that I'm here on on this earth see I'm telling you if you have never experienced the joys of this addiction I invite you right now to come running to this altar run into the arms of Jesus he's waiting not with a temporary fix but with an eternal change come on come run to this altar he's the one who died so that you can live thanks for watching I pray that this message has blessed your life you know one thing you could take away from this sermon is that when we are not in right relationship with God we are desperately trying to fill that incompleteness within us with whatever is offered up to us my prayer today is that you develop an appetite to have a holy addiction to the presence and to the Word of God I know that when you get to that place, man, you'll experience the joy, the love, and the power of God like never before. Now is the time to rise up. Make sure you share this message with your friends and your family. When you share, you are evangelizing. So do the work of an evangelist and get this right now word out. Bless you.